everybody, Mike Deere here with your race of the day for Saturday, November 19th. The race of the day is the 7th at Aqueduct Stakes Action. On the turf course at the Big A is the uh, Geoponte Stakes for three-year-olds, a mile and a 16th on the outer turf course. Uh, the purse is $135 thousand uh, dollars. The race of the day is brought to you by DRF Bets. Let's take a look at the field for the Gio Ponte Stakes. 10 entered. The number 10, uh, Be Better, is your even money morning line favorite. He's also entered main track only, um, so we hope that we don't get to see Be Better on Saturday. Nine entered for the turf for this Gio Ponte Stakes. Pretty well matched field. Todd Pletcher has the two uh, morning line favorites uh, in the main body of the race as well. The number eight is Steady On. He is two to one on the morning line coming in here off of back-to-back -back wins right here at Aqueduct on the turf. Um, the number two, Grand Sonata, three to one on the line, also trained Pied Pletcher, um, has plenty to recommend to be sure. Horse who's been you know, going basically from the beginning of this year right up until now, holding his own against some uh, very, very good three-year-old turf horses. He's a major, major player in here. We'll get to him in just a second. Um, we'll take a look uh, first off at the uh, Time Form US pace projector. Um, Time Form US doesn't really give the advantage here to either front runners or closers. Um, the number three, Riot House, uh, is expected to be right up there on the pace, along with Steady On. And again, Steady On is a horse. He broke his maiden two starts back in wire-to-wire -wire fashion, had to sit off of it a little bit last time because the pace was faster. And he was, you know, perfectly comfortable doing that. Um, so he's adaptable, but it feels like he's going to be forward in this race. Dakota Gold, the six, also has a little bit of speed. Um, and it feels like he's the kind of horse who they may want to get a little bit aggressive with. He's a New York bred here, stepping up in class. But he's run some very fast races. He's held his own in open company more than once uh, in the past. So he's a horse who could be forward in here. <laughs> Certainly Riot House, the three, could go. He's never actually been outright on the lead in any of his first five career starts. But he's been right up close in all of those races. So certainly um, with an inside, a post towards the inside here, uh, he could certainly be heading forward as well. Even the number one church down, another horse shipping in here from Woodbine. He's a horse who could be up close to the pace. We'll start off talking about Churchtown because I think he's a major player in this race. Um, a horse who, so far anyway, has only run on turf three times. He won one of those races. He also ran really, really well in his most recent start when they stepped him up into a stakes race. But getting back to the win two starts back, when they switched him to turf and stretched him back out a little bit in distance, he ran really well that day. Broke from the far outside post. He got caught very wide uh, around the first turn with his rider sort of looking for a spot. He couldn't really um, get dropped over in that race. Um, so he got caught on the outside. Then he had to make another run on the outside around the second turn to get him to contention. Um, and I thought he stayed really gamely. Um, he took that race over about mid-stretch and he held on to the, to the finish in there. I thought that was a really good performance with an 87 buyer. And then he came back a couple of months later in the Toronto Cup. And I thought he ran really well. Again, we're going to look at the, the repl uh, replay, the stretch run of this Toronto Cup. This horse ran really well in here. Um, a little bit hard to settle early in this race. And it felt like maybe his rider wanted to rate him a little bit. And Churchtown didn't really cooperate early. He wound up pulling his rider up to contest the pace. Contested it all the way around the final turn. He's still contesting it in the stretch, as you see in the replay. Um, and he's really staying gamey in here. He's going to eventually put everybody away. And then he can't hold off the, the one-run closer at the end. He just gets nailed on the wire. This horse ran really, really well last time on a pace that was, you know, more than solid. Again, it was a little, you know, disheartening to see him not really want to settle in the race. And I think, you know, Junior Alvarado might have to get him to do that here. Um, but this horse breaks from the rail, coming off of two really good performances. He should be forwardly placed in here um, to work out the right kind of a trip. And I think if he can do that, I think Churchtown's a pretty dangerous horse in this Gio Ponte. Grand Sonata's the two. Again, I just think he makes a, a lot of sense in this race. He's already a multiple stakes winner on the turf. Now, he hasn't won a race um, since you go back to the beginning of February when he won the Grade 3 Kittens Joy down at Gulfstream. But his form has really held up the second half of this year. And Pletcher's run him in several, you know, really, really tough races for this uh, three-year-old uh, turf division. And this horse, for the most part, has held his own. He didn't really show up in the Saratoga Derby uh, back in August at Saratoga. But otherwise, he's run well in all of his races. That includes the most recent start, the Hill Prince, right here um, at the Big A, going a mile and an eighth. We'll take a look at the, the replay, the stretch run um, of the Hill Prince, because this horse just runs well again. He can't get the job done in here. He's not a real threat at the end of the at the end of this race. It's just another good performance from Grand Sonata. He got to save a lot of ground in mid-pack. He got to the clear at the top of the stretch, and it's a game finish. Um, he's not really threatening the winner, Celestial City, but he just misses second. He gets third. Um, the horse that finished right behind him 
in fourth, who's uh, also, you know, back in this race, by the way, wicked fast. Um, that horse um, also, I thought, came through with a pretty good performance in that spot. But I just thought Grant Sonata ran a little bit better. He's drawn towards the inside. The slight cutback in distance isn't a problem for him. I think in some ways you could argue that, that Grant Sonata is the horse to beat just because he's got the, the figures, he's got the class lines, and he's got the right kind of adaptable running style. He, they, he's not going to be on the lead, but he doesn't have to be too far away either. I, I just think he makes a lot of sense in this race, and he doesn't always get the respect he deserves. The three is Riot House. I thought he was pretty hard to like in here. I think he's just going to have to improve if he's going to seriously contend in this race. He was in the, that Toronto Cup. We looked at the replay uh, when we were talking about Church Churchtown a, a while back. Um, and this horse ran fine in there. He got a good trip. He was right up close to the pace the entire way along with Churchtown. And he tried really hard through the stretch. He just wasn't good enough. And he couldn't reach the leaders. And he got out finished at the end of that race. And um, I didn't really see a big excuse for him. Maybe they'll get aggressive with him this time. Uh, Kendrick Carmouche uh, is back aboard for the ride. And maybe Kendrick will just you know try to make the lead with this horse. And I suppose it could make a difference. I just feel like he's in a little bit tough here and has to improve. The four... Um, 02035, he's 15 to 1 on the line, a horse who is 1 for 13 on the turf in his career. That win, uh, the maiden win, came over a year ago, last October um, at Belmont Park. He ran, actually ran really well breaking his maiden. So he hasn't won since then, but he's another horse who, for the most part, his form has been fine. He hasn't found the winner's circle, but he's run pretty well in several races that I would argue are, are perhaps even tougher than this one. Um, two starts back, he was in the better talk now at Saratoga. He finished a good second. He was no match for Wit, uh, but he was clearly second best in that race. Uh, an 89 buyer speed figure. He was 25 to 1 that day. He's going to be a big price in here. You know, is it going to be easy for him to win this race? No. Uh, he's probably going to need to catch a break or two, but he's another horse who's pretty adaptable as far as running style goes, and it just feels like he's going to get overlooked in the wagering here. And if I personally was looking for a horse to just take a shot with at one of the bigger prices, it would be 02035. I don't think he's in over his head in this race by any stretch. Wicked Fast is the five. He was in that Hill Prince replay that we just watched. That was his first start uh, for trainer Mike Maker after a trainer change. Um, he was also dropping back in distance. Um, his prior start was the Jockey Club uh, Derby Invitational at a mile and a half. Um, I don't know what to say about uh, his Hill Prince. He ran fine in there, an 85 buyer speed. Again, he was in the photo um, with Grand Sonata for second, third, and fourth. They, you know, they were sort of all in the mix there, um, fighting it out. I, I just thought all in all, this horse got the right kind of trip, and he did his best with it in there. He, he was taken to the back of the pack early. He got to save a ton of ground. He never had to leave the rail as they came into the stretch, and he had room through the stretch, and he was rallying. I, I won't take anything away from him. He ran fine in there at 15 to 1. Um, but I just wonder if he's going to be a shorter price this time. And um, he's not the kind of horse, you know, personally that I would be taking a shorter price on. If he's a big price, um, I'm not going to argue with him at all. The number six is Dakota Gold, a New York bred, um, a horse who uh, was a, a stakes winner against Open Company as a two-year-old last September at Monmouth with an 85 buyer, by the way, as a two-year-old. That led to him running in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf at Del Mar last November. He ran fine in that race. He wound up he wasn't the favorite. He wound up being the favorite at post time after that whole snafu with the with the Godolphin entry in Modern Games. Um, but he still, you know, ran the race that he ran. He was going to take money in that spot anyway, obviously. And he finished in a pretty good fifth. I, I didn't think he ran poorly at all in that race. So far this year, it's been all New York bred races for Dakota Gold. And um, he's run fine in all of them. He's two for three this year. He's been very, very heavily favored and all three of those races um, uh, was denied in the Rick Violet stakes at Saratoga. Two back at one to five. He ran okay in that race, but he maybe didn't get quite the aggressive ride that he needed. And that wasn't the case in his most recent start. This is the Cab Callaway division of the New York Stallion Series. And he's one to five again. Here's the replay. Um, I read Ortiz after he was upset uh, with this horse in the Violet one start back. He didn't take any chances in this Cab Callaway. He just put Dakota Gold right on the lead. Um, and he's just too good for these horses. Uh, the horse that's running second to him there in that replay, Marin Arasost, is also uh, back in this field. That was probably the best race Marin Arasost had ever run in his life, but he's only second best to Dakota Gold, um, who was just too much for them. Now they're going to step him back up in class here and see, you know, listen, based on the speed figures, he fits in this race. He has enough speed that if uh, Manny Franco, who takes over this time, if Manny wants to send this horse and try to make the front, he's probably fast enough to get there. So it'll be interesting to see what tactics they employ. Um, Dakota Gold, 
you know, to me, he's not a great price on the morning line. I don't know if I'd be betting him at anything like that nine to two, and, and that's probably where he's going to be. Um, at the same time, I don't think I'd be surprised if he was able to beat this field. Um, I'm looking elsewhere, but Dakota Gold's a factor in this race. Wow, what a summer is the seven. He's got a couple of races that will give him a look. The main claim to fame for Wow, what a summer so far in his career is the big upset win in the Penn Mile back over the summer. Um, at Penn National, that was a bog of a turf course, a mile uh, and 142 and one. This horse was 83 to one, and he handled the turf course, and a lot of other horses didn't. And um, this horse managed to take advantage of it. His, his form since then, it's okay. It doesn't really make him a contender in here. I, I didn't really want this horse. He's going to be a big price, though. The eight is study on, morning line favorite as far as the turf uh, portion of this race goes. Um, they stretched him out after his debut. He's won both of those races right here uh, on the outer turf course at Aqueduct. His, uh, his maiden win two back just got loose on the lead. Um, he made the front easily. Everybody else in that race took a hold. And this horse pulled off an upset to wire that field at 12-1. to 1. That wasn't the case last time. He had to do it a different way. The pace was much faster. Um, so he couldn't make the lead. So he had to sit. He was pretty comfortable sitting. He got a good trip in that race. And he came with a really good finish through the stretch to, to run down the horse who was on the lead. That horse was, uh, was stretching out for the first time. Java Buzz. Um, 95 buyer speed figure for this horse. He showed he can sit a little bit. He will be forward in this race. I read Ortiz winds up here after, you know, handling a couple of these other horses at, at different times um, throughout their career. So there's a lot to like about this horse. Um, the flip side, and if he runs a 95, he's probably going to win. Um, the flip side of that is this is a pretty significant step up in class for Steady on. Um, so I don't think you can just expect him to show up here and, you know, maybe not have to improve at all to win. I think he is going to have, even with the 95 showing, I think he's going to have to run a better race. This is a better field. Uh, the number nine, Marinara Sauce, another New York bred. We, he was in that Dakota Gold replay in the Cab Callaway we saw a couple minutes ago. He ran well in there. Um, he was never a threat to Dakota Gold, but it was pretty clearly the best race that this horse has ever run. And he was clearly second best in there. His most recent start after a trainer change from Chad Brown to Mitch Friedman, um, got rained off the turf. So you don't want to hold that race against him. He was only second best that day. Back to turf is a positive. Um, you have to wonder, um, not only um, can he improve now, because he's going to have to improve to win here, but can he just hold his form um, out of the Chad Brown barn? We'll see if he can do it, um, even if he does. It's probably not going to be enough, but this is a horse who will probably just sit back and try to make one run in this race. And maybe he'll get a little pace to attack in here. Um, it would be a pretty big upset if Marinara Sauce won this race. However, pretty good running, though, um, of this Gio Ponte on Saturday at the Big A. I thought there were, you know, a lot of different horses, a lot of different ways to go in here. I'm going to, you know, take a little bit of a stand against Study On at 2-1 to one on the morning line, though. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bet Churchtown in this race, shipping down from Canada for trainer Roger Eiffel. Like his last two races a lot. Thought he ran really, really well last time when uh, taking a tough beat in the Toronto Cup. Love that he's drawn towards the inside. The 6-1 to one morning line is fair. To me, one, two, four, and eight uh, for me in the uh, Saturday race of the day. It's the Geo Ponte Stakes at the Big A. It goes as uh, race number seven. The approximate post time is 2.44 Eastern time. Good luck.